What's happening? Did Margot let Brad go? Patience, little sister. Relax. I can't relax until my husband's out of jail. Soon, I promise. Then you can go back to your lives and forget any of this ugliness ever happened. You better hope so. I'll be in touch. Margo? Oh, damn. Drop the gun, detective, or your bright young protege is going to end up in the morgue just like I did. Brad, hey. Where have you been? It's a long story. Did they let you go? Just the opposite. They booked me for murder. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, tell me about it. I told Margo about the computer guy. What? Oh, no! I had to. Yeah, but she didn't believe me. Oh, thank God. Why are you upset? I am. I'm, I'm just emotionally drained right now. What I meant to say was too bad. But anyway, I don't want you to worry. Because everything's going to be okay. Well, why do you know something? I'm just suddenly very optimistic. That makes one of us. All right, Snyder, let's go. Down to hold. Hey, can I just have a, a moment alone with my wife? Just please, I mean, she's your boss's sister, you know. I'm sorry. What? Just for all the grief that I've caused you. I mean, you didn't, you didn't sign up for this. Our vows were for better or for worse, not for better or better. And you know, they weren't for incarceration either. Would you please stop apologizing? I love you. I don't regret a second that we've spent together. And it's gonna be all roses very soon. I love you. Hello, sunshine. I just saw my husband let off to a cell again. When is he getting out? Relax, it will be soon, very soon. You were so easy to fool. <laughs> you actually thought that big old Brad had the guts and the wherewithal to kill me? As if. You know, I enjoyed picturing him making 60 cents an hour sipping license plates for the rest of his life until his arthritis got the best of him. Every girl's got a dream. <laughs> You're telling me. I would have gotten away with it, too. If Brad and Katie had followed my instructions, You'd be feeding him for a ball and chain as we speak. So you were the instant messenger. Oh, that's right. I really had those two dancing on a string, didn't I? And Henry, too. Hmm. That little snake. I hate the whole lot of them. Why? 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 What did they ever do to you? Uh, that's my business. Well, it must have been something, you know, major. I mean, for you to concoct such an elaborate masquerade, you had such a promising career. Why would you want to throw that away to destroy the lives of decent people? <sighs> They're not decent. Katie's jealous and vindictive. Who's talking? <sighs> and Brad. Right, Brad's an oaf. I'll give you that. But you, you... No, I wouldn't. I, I could have loved him. I... But he rejected me, and so he had to pay the price. Wait a minute, you faked your own death because Brad Snyder turned you down? That's setting the bar pretty low, don't you think? Oh, well, I don't like being rejected. Well, I, I get that. Wait, what about that poor woman in the locker? Oh, relax, deputy dog. I saw the body from the Chicago morgue. Jane Doe came in handy. Ugh, I had to use a whole bottle of hand sanitizer and the smell still wouldn't come out. God, you are so sick. No, I'm just clever. Which reminds me, I gotta hit the road. I would love to stay and chat, but something tells me the Chicago PD is hot on your heels. So, uh, adios, muchachas. Let's do this again. Real soon! Not a chance. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I should have checked the closet before I went into the bathroom. It was such a rookie mistake. I'm don't so worry. sorry. Don't worry, everyone gets one. All right, so yeah, I called the Chicago PD. I had to have some backup. Just didn't call him soon enough. Man, I am gonna owe my sister such an apology. I hate that. 
Hello. Hi. Can I help you? Oh, I'm Father Bernard. I'm looking for Jack Snyder. I am Jack Snyder. How can I help you? I'm here for your instruction. My instruction? Father, I'm not Catholic. I know. That's the point. Father Bernard, hi. You're early. No, I'm right on time. But it uh, seems your husband-to-be wasn't expecting me. Oh, Jack. Oh, I'm so sorry. With everything going on with the wedding, I totally forgot to tell you Father Bernard was coming over. Okay, excuse us for, for a second. What, what, what is happening right now? Well, I see you're not Catholic, and if we want to get married at Our Lady of Sorrows, you have to have instruction. An hour ago, I thought we were getting married at Lakeview. Oh, that's just the reception. No, a, a church wedding feels more permanent. It's not. Jack, when you said I could have the wedding of my dreams, that means a church wedding. Oh, it's not a deal breaker, is it? I'm not, a I'm not a religious guy, Father. I mean, I believe in God and everything, but as far as being a churchgoer, I, it's, no offense, <laughs> that's okay. Let's, let's just talk. See where your head is. Sure, sure. Come, come on in. I'd like to speak uh, with Jack alone for a bit. Janet tells me you've been married before. Yes. And your uh, ex-wife is the mother of your children? One of my ex-wives, but she's the main one. We've been married a couple of times. How many times have you been divorced then? Thanks for coming. It's not Janet and Sage again, is it? No, no. Sage is now thrilled that Jack and Janet are getting married. Janet bought her off with a very expensive flower girl. Sounds like it's going to be some of that. I'm just afraid that Jack is going to go bankrupt trying to pay for it. He can't afford it, you know. And you're not helping matters at all. What did I do? You're enabling Janet. Oh, I'm not. I barely even speak to her. She's demanding that Jack foot the bill for this ridiculously extravagant wedding. And he's going into debt to do it. And now I find out that you're encouraging him. My cousin came to me. He needed help. I said yes. Why do you have such a problem with that? We can't even afford tuition at our son's school. And yet he comes up with $5,000 for some designer gown that's going to be worn once and then chucked in the back of a closet for 30 years. He doesn't know what he's doing. What is he doing? He, he's digging himself a hole, a deep one that he may never be able to crawl out of. And it's not All right. right. Carly, it's not stop, fair. stop. Would you stop? Would you children. listen to yourself? This is Jack's business. It's not about you. 